Hi, Mari. Hello, you. welcome everyone. Um, and welcome to the Northern Territory in the Black Indigenous Business Resilience Program. I'd like to welcome my sister and also Professor Ruth Wallace to the discussion today. How are you doing, sis? Hi, good, thanks, Mary, and hi, everybody. Um, family, what we're gonna do is um, just provide a bit of an overview, a bit of a bio of our, um, and make sure that she's she's too humble, but I'll share some of her, celebrate her a little bit. So let's do a little bit about our, our, our system. So um, Professor Ruth Wallace is the Dean of College and Indigenous Futures, Arts and Society, and Director of the Northern Institute at Charles Darwin University. Ruth's research connects to digital systemic, systematic um, learning pedagogies and approaches to workforce development through remote-based enterprises. Ruth leads the workforce development research team at the Northern Institute, Charles Darwin University, and focuses on collaborative approaches to workforce development and engagement with community, governments, and industry that are sustainable and scalable. Ruth has extensive experience in educational practice and development, and a key focus in regards to indigenous, in remote and urban um, development. And my sister, thanks a lot for coming along today. Thank you, um, so family, this one too, before we start our yarn today, um, Ruth, this one too, just firstly, as we always do, as you know, always want to acknowledge our First Nation Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander ancestors, their elders, their communities and families, and also extend that respect to you, your family, and also the Charles Darwin family, and also the families in Northern Territory. And also, once again, pay respect and homage to any family members, brothers and sisters who have passed. Um, in just recently, and also obviously during this COVID-19 period. So thank you very much, my sister, for joining me. Thank you, Mary. Um, so during today's discussion, um, what we're going to be doing is just going through, obviously the program is focused over the next 12 weeks. We're going to be looking at business, uh, business support, business recovery in regards to COVID-19, primarily focused around our established um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander businesses there in the Northern Territory. In relation to this COVID-19 pandemic that's been sweeping obviously our, our country and obviously the world. Um, so what I'd like to lead with, if it's okay, um, Ruth, is um, can you tell us a little bit more about what the Northern Institute does and what are some of your focus area in regards to COVID-19 recovery in the Northern Territory? Sure, thanks, Murray, and thanks so much for having me here and the opportunity to speak. Um, the Northern Institute is a social and policy research institute and it was set up through a partnership between the Northern Territory Government and Charles Darwin Uni. And we really want to do research that makes a difference to people's lives, that helps get evidence and ways to think about really difficult questions that people are asking about the future for the Territory, but also across Australia. Anywhere that's got fragile economies, remote economies, have got people with got really different ways of thinking about the world, and real strengths from their culture, from their society and from their histories. How do we make that into a positive in this world? And I particularly think that while we might not have all the answers, we're really good at helping people ask different sorts of questions and having the evidence to do it, but also to make sure that any research that's done is done in partnership with the people that it will affect, the people on the ground, and that there's a legacy through that research of building capacity, building leadership and strength locally so it isn't about fly in, fly out research, mm. but about making sure that people can take that research and, and lead it in the future. And the other thing I always say is the research is not about changing people. It's about changing the policy. It's about changing the process to better fit with the ways that people want to work, can work and can lead. And I suppose in regards to that, if I can go on the back of that, um, Ruth, um, I suppose there's no better time to test that, put that into action in regards to COVID-19 in the Northern Territory. Um, obviously, um, with everything that's happening across all our states and territories and where, how COVID, and I mean, in regards to, you know, hats off to the community and obviously the territory and government mm. on closing down the remote communities really, really, really quickly. But more importantly, just uh, the community coming together um, in regards to COVID-19 and where the CDU sits in regards to the work that you're doing with your teams. Um, what are some of the activities that you've been undertaking with your team? team sorry. Well, we think there's something very interesting around the changes that have happened because of COVID-19. So the things that we were always told were impossible, leadership from the community taking mm. over business and actually saying what that business will be and who will be in charge. So the things we've been um, talking about and doing research on for a long time around governance, all of a sudden become the only way to do business. Mm. So one of the things that we're really interested in is not only what the business is, 
but who runs it, how everything is negotiated to fit in with the aspirations and the culture and the society of that community. But how you then start to transfer power so that community can control it for the long term. And it seems to me that COVID-19 gives us an absolute opportunity to do that. So there's, there's businesses that would have maybe in the past have some, you know, the, the expectation is someone's going to come out and going to help you and do it this way and do it that way, which sets up a certain logic around how business is done and the role of Aboriginal people in leading business. Well, you can't do that anymore. Mm, so right. now everyone needs to stay in town and they need to stay in their offices and they need to actually reach out and offer proper support. But they don't decide what happens. And they mm. had, it has really changed the power relationship. And one of the things I think that's really important is that we maintain that strength going forward. We're doing some really interesting work with um, the local decision making work that's happening in the Northern Territory, where we're helping build the eval evaluation framework um, from the ground up, how people will understand that and lead that work on, on the ground and understand how they want to take control of the business of, of what's happening in their community. And that's changed because now all these researchers that would have had a part of the project, they're the only people who can do that work. Right. We're at. So we're trying to make a, um, well, we started by making a mandate that that's how we were going to work and we're going to keep that going through COVID-19, one, so people didn't lose their jobs and their businesses, but two, to set it up as a standard going forward. Mm. We do a whole lot of other things like um, building businesses, supporting businesses, but also helping businesses connect with each other so people can learn from each other's experience and get mm. great ideas or learn what things to fall over and not do it yeah. again from each other. And I think that now everyone's got a lot more used to using Zoom and uh, Skype and yeah. connect in this way. That's also become a real strength that will stop us backpedalling into deficit models of business development and support. Mm. And I mean, that's a, that's a really key part in regards to a focus in regards to the Indo Black um, program. And um, I mean, obviously, CD, you are a very key partner and a supporter of the program along with the Northern Territory government. And it's about also, I think, what I'm hearing there as well, um, Sister Ruth, is, is also about, like you shared, it's about using alternative platforms to continue business, um, to strengthen, continue to be connected with, with MOB. Um, but also how you can actually not just do business in the Northern Territory, but through some of these online platforms that are that are fit for purpose in regards to whatever your business is looking at doing, um, that this is another way, this is the future, of, this is how we're, we're going to be doing business for, for a fair while. But more importantly, you can actually do this um, with appropriate skills, and this is what the program is about. Um, Ruth, in regards to, um, I mean, where, where you're at in regards to, can you give us an idea where you, where you are at the moment, if you don't mind, just, just for everyone's information. Where, where I'm working at Yeah, like you're, are you in Darwin? Are you at the university? Yeah, yeah. I'm on Barakia right yeah. land. I'm in Darwin at the Charles Darwin University campus at Casuarina. And how is it, how's the team um, been dealing with, I'm um, obviously, I know the research teams are in and out of the office and there's some working from, from home. I know you've shared that previously when we've had previous discussions. Um, but in regards to how, how is team morale, how, how is the community there at the university? Uh, look, everyone's pretty positive. We've had such a good experience here. I think the early lockdown worked. Uh, a lot of people are back out on country now for cultural businesses. A lot of funerals going on, a lot of cu cultural business happening. Uh, so teams have been out uh, pretty much with their families for the past month. Uh, it's also very interesting. So a lot of uh, people went out and visited family or visited country over the past few weeks and have just come back at the end of last week. And there's a really consistent message of we want to partner, we want to work together. How can we take this as an opportunity to get into education and research and work with you. So there's a whole lot of new communities we think will become part of our network and part of our business here. And so we're going to open the door and do a whole lot of online meetings to see what that looks like and what people want to do and what people want led on country through, through support and through some of the things that we can do. Mm. We figure that we're not going anywhere. You know, mm. we're a uni, we'll be around. So we're a good infrastructure to draw on, but we're then not there to replace what's going on in country. Yeah. So I think people feel quite positive that we've been able to achieve that support, that when as soon as everyone could get back out to see family, um, there was a huge relief for a lot yeah, of Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, and good. a few people have chosen now to go home and work from country. So some people will now be leaving Darwin and staying home and we're setting up their business uh, as part of the university to be led from their country and we're going to change projects accordingly 
uh, like this one. Uh, yeah. this, this was a project that was meant to be quite different, uh, but mm -hmm. there was an opportunity through partnership with you yes. to think quite differently about what we did. So overall positive and ready to take on those changes. Um, so some regard, I know um, some of the things, I mean, there's been so many um, innovative um, pieces of information and obviously some programs that have been happening from um, obviously the Bond Territory Indigenous Business Network have been really, really active, which has been really fantastic. Mm. There's been stuff around some of our other enablers within, which we're going to be part of this Motherway family um, in regards to the program over the next 12 weeks. Um, I know I've, I've seen some of the micro-credentialing um, courses and stuff. Is that How's that all going and, and how, how can um, participants and brothers and sisters that are um, watching today, how can they um, be part of that? So we set up a micro-credentialing trial last year, which just means little bits of courses. So it means that we could work out what do you need to get started and do certain sorts of work. We started with Indigenous researchers, some language workers, the right. sorts of things of people we're already working with. And we said if you wanted to get a credential to say you are authorised to do this work from an inside perspective but also from outside the community. So if someone was coming to your community and they wanted some researchers, you're, we'd have people with credentials and that would also relate to how people were paid and how people were authorised to lead in projects. So those micro-credentials go from a starter, early career, all the way up to a senior Indigenous community researcher. So it acknowledges yeah. people's leadership and knowledge. And people do those projects by doing things on country that they have identified as important. And we map to their learning and their practice all the things that um, external bodies want to hear about. So how do you theorise that research? How do you develop methodologies? So that if you were to bump into, as a senior Indigenous researcher, anybody, you can talk about that research in cultural terms, in a way that is understood locally, but also in a way that's understood by that person from outside, so that people stand toe to toe. They negotiate from an e equal side of a partnership across the table. And yeah. those micro-credentials have meant, well, they've been so successful, I seem to be signing them every day because you can start and finish them um, as suits you. Yeah. But then a lot of people have then said, I love this so much, can I do more? And they've joined our Diploma of Indigenous Research or our Graduate Certificate of Indigenous Research to go on and do further qualifications too good, too good. Uh, to make sure that they're getting recognised, but also building skills and confidence to be able to work in a lot of different sorts of research. Hmm. And now we're going to add some work around um, uh, the, the business side of managing that research. So they don't yeah. get caught out by how much to charge or what to do when the Prime Minister and Cabinet or NIAA says, OK, that's a great idea. How much do you need or what can we do to help you? Yeah. You know how to answer those questions good, good. and get the results. A challenge, a challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To do the sorts of things that um, I know you do, you and Julianne do uh, magnificently through TagEye to help mm. people. And this really came out of the work that you did in the um, innovative uh, in, in Indigenous researchers work that we did in partnership with CSIRO and UQ, yeah. where we really asked what the question, what do Indigenous businesses need to be able to be ready to flourish. And that readiness moment's really important. Yeah. And the systems we have are often a bit fragmented. So micro-credentials are also meant to give you a way to say, I need this now. Yeah. I want to learn this part of the system at this moment. And now I'm working on a portfolio system that at the moment is Pathways Plus, but it means that how do I add all these little bits together to get full qualifications yeah. uh, and to be able to take leadership roles at a national level on grants mm. or locally as people want to. Yeah, I think um, some key takeaways from their family and just wanted us to earmark some of this, um, Ruth, is is around the importance of culture, you know, in regards to us as Indigenous businesses. And I know that's something that um, us as, a, as an organisation and Tavo management consultants have pushed really quite hard, but the application, the importance of the application of that um, in our businesses and the other piece around it, like you've shared, is part of this 12 weeks that we're going to be sharing with brothers and sisters and obviously drawing upon the um, the extensive knowledge base that's amongst the Northern Territory um, ecosystem and the enabling and also our brothers and sister businesses over there is also about, look, there's a mind, not a minefield, but there, there's a bit of a maze in regards to how to do a, a grant. Um, there's all these support mechanisms. Um, I know it is, and some of these topics around job seeker and, and various other pieces we'll, we'll discuss with other key stakeholders within um, the Northern Territory um, business ecosystem. But I suppose in regards to what I'm also taking away from your sister, and I just want to, if I can just segue a little bit um, to the next point I'd like to share with you and ask your thoughts around is for our, for our Northern Territory, established Northern Territory Indigenous businesses, 
Um, what would be maybe two or three things that you you would suggest that they explore or that they do in this current time in regards to COVID and COVID and what it's actually doing, not just to business, but also to us in the community and also family? Yeah, I think that's such an important question, Murray. Um, the first thing, and it was very clear, uh, we were at uh, the big funeral last week, and what's clear is that you need to run businesses that have time for cultural business. So how do we make sure that the business models don't drag people away? Everyone was who was able to turned up um, out at the stadium last week for that big funeral and were able to spend the time remembering and being with family. It was really important. So, and a lot of those people are business people who've got you know, businesses in difficult moments. So how do we build businesses that respect and support cultural activity, bring young people in so that they're connected to the cultural activity as well as the business, but don't compete with each other? Love. I think that's just so important. And I haven't seen a business survive that hasn't been able to deal with that issue. Otherwise, uh, the conflicts within a person or within a team make mm. it very difficult. The second thing I think is governance. This is a moment to take over the leadership yes. of governance. Um, certainly we're seeing land councils uh, coming and wanting to support places that want to take over more of the business of the communities. Um, there's people coming in this week actually to talk about it. Uh, the wonderful work like Andy Liaqua last two weeks ago who've, who've taken over a whole lot of work on group. Wow. And they've made very clear decisions about where they're going and how that's going to happen. And the communities come together around those. And I think that's not going to be just the money making but it's also the social enterprise awesome. so they're taking recognition of what this will mean for education what this will mean for training what will this mean for career mm. development so it's never just one path it's often many paths so we need to work together to find those many paths space for them to move and change and the third one for me is to learn from previous times and to take this learning through so one of the wonderful things we did here a few years ago is we had a session with, um, we were talking about uh, to Aboriginal tour, touring businesses, yeah. tour guides, um, people who are doing accommodation, all sorts of things. And we were talking about the future of Aboriginal tourism. And uh, we had one woman come along and we said, oh, well, you're the goddess of uh, tourism. You've won all the awards. Tell us all your secrets. And she came in and she said, secrets i've got to tell you how to fail she said i had i had the best business i had 20 employees i won every award i had millions of dollars of turnover and then something changed airbnb came completely crashed the business and they're bankrupt in um you know too short a time very very sad for them and she said that she learned that disruption and change is going to be normal and that we need to prepare for that so whatever happens now and this change to the way we work the way we communicate what we have to work with, mm. you know, that's what we're good at. That's what yeah, we're yeah, best yeah. at. So yeah, yeah. That, that managing change and taking a long-term view to handling and learning from change and taking that learning forward, I think would be my number three, Definitely. learning from this time to take forward into our businesses. Thanks, my sister. Um, and I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, I apologise. Um, and thanks for those three, I mean, really, really important about collaboration, governance and about the learnings moving forward. Um, if you had to share with our brothers and sisters and the people that are listening on um, our chat today, um, what would be one word of wisdom that you'd like to, for them to take away from, from this discussion? I, I don't know about a word of wisdom, <laughs> but uh, I'll try with some words. Here we um, go, here we go. Uh, I think that it's there is a moment to take control and to stand still because nothing can be done at the moment on country truly properly without leadership and without control on country from people who meant to have that control that really is. they can't get on they can't do and push around in quite the same way yeah so there is a moment to come together and say there's a there's a couple of things we in this area or from this family or from this place that we're going to stand beside yeah. And we're going to quietly, calmly, very clearly articulate this This one changes and we're not going to let it slip back. Mm. So the one I've chosen like that is people flying in and out. Yeah. That's changed. So no longer will I build anything when I'm, you know, we're offered all sorts of money all the time. But unless it is actually building a business on country that can be led on country and can handle another pandemic, we won't support it. Yeah. And yeah that consistently through when we're having the discussion about what this will be 
is changing the conversation to say, well, isn't this as a business opportunity for someone on country to take this over? 100%. It is not going to come. Maybe the uni can help, but maybe we won't run that project. Yeah. Maybe we'll help set it up or we'll support if that's what people want. But we're not going to do the fly-in, fly-out model anymore. And the argument is, well, it's too risky, you can't do it because things mm. might change. But really, it's because that's been the goal. Why on earth would we lose that ground now? Mm -hmm. So, so I think there's a moment to do that. Everyone will have something different and they might be quite small, but it does feel like there's a moment of change. Definitely. My sister, look, thanks a lot for um, um, sharing today from spirit, from your knowledge, from your experience, and also your passion um, up there in our, in our awesome territory, up in the Northern Territory, and um, also for your continued work and obviously the, the Northern Institute as well. I'm just going to pay respects to everyone. Um, as always, um, I'll finish as we started. Um, just want to acknowledge our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander ancestors, um, our elders and community, um, our brothers and sisters up there, you know, in the across the Northern Territory, no matter what region, no matter what house, no matter where you are, um, just want to pay respects to them and also to yourself and to your family. Um, Sister Ruth, really do appreciate it. Um, for everyone else out there, thank you very much for coming along. This was the inaugural, this is the very first one. Uh, discussion um, um, that we've in regards to the Indo Black um, Indigenous Business Resilience Program. Um, there's going to be a number, and every week we'll have something on. Um, if you are watching, um, if you're going to watch the replay on Facebook, um, to get access to the program, you have to be a Northern, a Northern Territory based business. Um, and just in the comments, just put the word deadly, and, and you will receive a message to connect with us. Um, in the Indo Black um, Northern Territory Indigenous Business Resilience Program group. If you're watching this on YouTube, click on the link in the description. The program will be running for 12 weeks and we will help um, you and your business post COVID-19 information. This is yours, this is your product, um, brothers and sisters um, across the Northern Territory. Um, it can only be useful if we all utilize it and come together as a community. And as Sister Ruth shared in our discussion today, um, it's not just about, it's about us collaborating. It's about ensuring appropriate governance process, but it's about the learning on how do we create a viable and sustainable Northern Territory economic economy, um, but also for our community to come together. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll have another guest speaker um, for you um, very, very soon. So stay tuned, and thank you for your time today. Thanks, Murray. Thanks,